Hi, I'm Kristen Yorka, and thank you for joining us on the Wild Wonder podcast, where we seek to democratize and demystify holistic wellness practices by talking with people in the field. Today, we have artist, art therapist, author, and manifestation maven, Leah Guzman. Thank you for being here. Woo-woo. Thank you for having me, Kristen. Super excited to uh, you know chat with you today about art therapy. Yeah, I'm... Full disclosure, I don't know much about what art therapy is, so I am going to be the spokesperson for those people out there that are new to this practice, Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm really excited to learn more. I'd like to start with, what is Mm -hmm. art therapy? Mm -hmm. We can have an abridged version. I know it's like the biggest (laughs) question ever. No, it's it's great. I mean, I'm glad that you've heard of it because I mean, it's been around for 80 years, but honestly, it's only been in the past few years that when people say, you know, what is art therapy? And like, they've never heard of it before. I'm like, what? You never heard of it? So I'm glad that you've heard of it. And I could totally mm-hmm. understand that you don't understand, you know, you don't know what it's about because a lot of people don't know what it's about. And so that's I, where I feel like I'm in my life right now is kind of like going out there and talking about it so people can understand. So basically mm-hmm. it's a psychotherapeutic um, approach to help you heal. So just like a licensed mental health counselor uses or a psychologist will use verbal therapy to talk to you, the art therapist is using art to help you communicate. So you are, um, you know, you're engaged with someone, with your art therapist. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're uh, going to be guided uh, through the process where um, you're working on specific needs. So it's whatever that you want to achieve for yourself. So maybe you might go seek a, an art therapist because you're having a lot of anxiety or bouts of depression mm-hmm. or have some PTSD um, or, you know, maybe there's a, uh, you know, might be going through a divorce or a life transition. So like, it's whatever mm-hmm. you're at in your life and you just want some extra support um, and you can, they help you use the art as a tool to communicate. So you don't necessarily have to be an artist, but you do have to be open to, you know, trying the materials and the media and letting it, um, you know, learn how to use it as a language. So most of my clients that I do see are already artists. Like they, they know that their art is a language and they, they're drawn to it. And, um, but it's helping them get like a deeper meaning within the art because the art has messages and mm-hmm. it's giving you that opportunity to reflect because when you're creating something, um, you might be in, you know, you're so much into like whatever you're going on in your life that you might not have the opportunity to really like sit back and reflect like, why did I create this? Or why is this showing up in my life? Because the art really does mirror your thoughts, your art is mirroring, um, you know, your behaviors, your patterns. So that's why it's good to have someone to help you hold that space and may help you reflect on like how that does mirror your life and then what changes you can make. So it's it's teaching you how to cope. And it's also, I mean, it has that beautiful aspect of helping you relax. You know, it's helping you just get into that process as well to, to use it as a, you know, a, a therapeutic tool to, to uh, you know, de-stress. All right. And I imagine that art, there's mm-hmm. certain things that we can't express, say in, in words or with our cognitive thinking. Mm-hmm. And maybe art is a way to express those things that can't be expressed any other way. I think the only modality I have for that, since I'm very kinetic, is I, mm-hmm. I can move. I can show you what it looks like in my body, right? Yes. And so to parallel that, it would be like maybe for some, the only ra- way they could express a certain feeling or emotion or some trial mm-hmm. they're going through in their life is to paint or create. Yes, that and that's exactly what we're doing. So it's like we're actually matching that feeling like with a color and being able to express it with lines and shapes and objects. And and so you don't have to always verbally say it, um, but I do get that question, like, do you actually talk in therapy? Like, well, usually we're gonna create art first and then we'll mm-hmm. talk about it, you know? So yeah, it's oh, that cool. same same process of, um, you know, be, really being in the feeling of it um, so you're not really, you know, talking, but you're in that feeling. And then later you go around and, and reflect. That's what the reflecting is, is being able to verbally talk about like what's going on. Why did you choose those colors? Or well, what does that mean for you? And, you know, how's that showing up in your life? So if we explained it in like a step-by-step process, let's say a mm-hmm. person comes to you and they mm-hmm. express that they're dealing with something, or I mm-hmm. often feel, um, as a practitioner that people will come and they don't really know what's going on. They know that something is off. So I imagine mm-hmm. that happens in our therapy too. They, they don't really know. 
Mm -hmm. um, and then they, you would create art with them or guide them mm -hmm. through an art process. Mm -hmm. And then there's a reflection period. And mm -hmm. is that the talking part that, that then you would kind of guide them through um, trying to come to an understanding of what they've created? Yes, so it's coming from them. So uh, for them to have that reflection and you know, usually when people come to me, like it's that same thing as well. Like they know that they're either bothered or something is uncomfortable or they feel like they're off and they're not sure why they're not getting what they want. Usually that's what mm -hmm. it is. It's like, you know, they want like a lover or they want a, just a new job or something and they're just feeling really mm -hmm. stuck. And so, you know, we, and, and I always look at it as, I call it like healing and manifesting because it's like, it's usually that we do want these certain desires um, but the block is because we need healing in that certain area, right? And so mm -hmm. it's right. it's being able to uncover that, of, you know, where does that stem from? And usually, you know, most of those are coming from, you know, our belief systems and how we grew up. And it's there's always a story back there. We all have a story somewhere that right. that needs to come up and be explored. And and it is easier, um, you know, to to create it to, um, you know, if you're being guided to know how to to you know, touch base with that, you know, those tender moments or what needs to be expressed. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that there's people that you also help to get really clear on their wants or the desires and values. Would that mm -hmm. be true? Yeah, that's how I usually start my sessions. I always start, I like to look at everything as like holistic and everything's interconnected. So just looking at mm -hmm. every area of your life from, you know, your your partners to like relationships with your coworkers to with your children and your parents and then looking at like your spirituality, um, you know, your career, your travel, um, your, your projects. I look at like every single area and, and have you rate it. So it's kind of like we have a stepping stone. And it's like, you know, if you're like at a one, but you want to be at a nine, okay, what mm -hmm. are those kind of those baby steps and getting there, you know? So it's kind of looking at that life as like a pie. Um, and then always going back to check in, um, you know, what are those steps that you're working on so that you can kind of see that you're, you are expanding, you know, you are, you're, you're moving and you're, you're learning and healing to, to manifest what you want. Is there a challenge that you've been seeing recently that um, and maybe an overwhelming majority of your clients or students have been experiencing? Mm, that's, that's a really good question. I always feel like usually the practitioner is bringing someone on that something they've already experienced like <laughs> does that right. make sense so it's like yeah. it's like the only challenges that i've had are like people mm -hmm. are coming to me it's like oh my god i've been there you know I, that was me five years ago that was me you know that was you know wherever i was at yeah. so the clients that i've been attracting are um have been women that have been blocked that that are artists but they're like right now they feel really blocked and they want to express themselves. They want to find their voice. And I've been there. Um, and then also women who are artists that have, um, they want to take their work into more of like a spiritual practice. Um, mm -hmm. And really like just being comfortable because they might like practice Reiki or they might practice, um, you know, some other things. And they want to be able to infuse uh, their art and offer services. So uh, maybe they want to do like healing art groups or, you know, something along those lines. Um, and they're not quite sure. Um, you know, sometimes I work with people who want to become art therapists and there's, I, I work with people that might not want to go that route because the, mm -hmm. to become an art therapist, it's, it's, it's pretty rigorous. You have to get a master's mm -hmm. degree and it's a two year program. You usually have to move and live there and it's very expensive. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, not everybody wants to go that route, but to have that training, it's um, it's very clinical and it's, it, it really helps you to be trauma informed so that you can go into any situation and really be able to help with the mental health aspect. And so for, there are a lot of wonderful artists out there that are, that do help um, with, with healing and, you know, they do like healing groups and things like that, but they just don't have that same type of training. So it's a little different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, but there's nothing wrong. I have no judgment either way, whatever path, you know, you want to go right. on and, um, and I support, I support creatives and what their, their choice is. But I feel like that's who I've been attracting um, in my independent, you know, private practice work. That's, that's who's been showing up. So in general, it's more like people going through a transitionary period. Yeah. Yeah. Or wanting to show up. 
Yeah, which almost we could almost all argue that we're all going through a transitional period right now because <laughs> the world yeah. is upside down and we kind of all have to figure out what how we're born anew in this new world. True. Um, so if like for a person like me that was not artistically mm -hmm. gifted or spiritually <laughs> gifted in art, um, my mom was a painter. I tried really hard. It just wasn't my thing. Um, what are the benefits to doing a practice like this or uh, even attempting a practice like this? Say you're open enough to try. Um, what are the benefits for somebody that's maybe not, um, it isn't their first go-to? Okay. Are you really analytical? I'm just curious. <laughs> are, you, are you very analytical? I'm super analytical. Okay. Well, that's what it is. Okay. So <laughs> you want to use the other side of the brain. Right. So that's the benefit is that if you, it, it teaches you to shut off the analytical part, because anytime that I've had classes where um, I used to do in-person classes and I would always have someone that was very analytical and they would get stuck. <laughs> and it's really teaching them to like, to, you know, get out of that thinking and really get into the feeling. Mm -hmm. It's like feel colors, feel how when they touch, you know, that's that vibration. What is, do you like that? If you, and if you like that, then let's do that. And if you don't like it, let's try something else. You know, so it, it's really just more of that playful, intuitive approach that can be so cathartic and satisfying. You know, but you have to allow yourself to, to get there. Yeah. Once you feel it, uh, you're like, oh, this is fun. You know, I want to, I want to do it again. <laughs> yeah. But it does. Like, if you're very analytical and you want to judge, you want to stay in the line, and you want to. Which I've worked with a lot of people. I mean, I actually I remember one client in particular. She, I mean, she's actually, um, she was she's an engineer for the brain. Like she would make stints for like people who have oh, blood wow. clots and stuff. Like yeah, she mm -hmm. but she really wanted to like calm herself and like do the other side of her brain. And I remember she would, you know, her artwork would be like the colors would just almost touch, but she didn't want to touch. I'm like, no, let them touch. Like you know, it was just like this baby stick to get into it, you know. And then when she figured yeah. that, aha, she's like, oh, I get it. I I love that. So yeah. So she was she was really into like mandalas and like doing things like that to to help calm herself. But oh, we could be, we could be besties. I yeah. I recently did. <laughs> <laughs> I recently did an art therapy type um, meditation or healing, and I'm I'm such a perfectionist that I was the last person done, and I refused to stop. <laughs> and everyone's like, "Can you just just let it go? Just like finish the thing. Every line doesn't have to be exactly as you want." I was like, "No, but it does." <laughs> But yeah, the, the, you felt satisfied, and, and and that's okay too. It's kind of like knowing where you are, but that can trip you up. You know, that's the part where yeah. you can like, and that shows up in different areas of your life. You know, so that's kind of that exploration of you know learning how to let right. go and and be be okay with stuff. Yeah, we all have something. Like, <laughs> and then it makes me think of so I'm able to visualize. Mm -hmm. But for instance, I just spoke to a family member the other day and I actually got the funniest text. It said, are you able to see things in your brain? And I was like, what? Um, yeah. And, and he's like, so you close your eyes. You're able to see things in your brain. I'm like, yeah. He's like, I don't. I don't even think I dream. And I was like, that's interesting. So I wonder mm -hmm. if art therapy is something that could bridge that gap. Is it? because I have the ability to visualize. I don't mm -hmm. necessarily, there's a block between the coming out with my hands and being able to draw or paint it. Mm -hmm. But I wonder what, for those people that actually have trouble um, bringing up an image in their mind, how that would assist them. That's really interesting. I mean, that would be like a really nice like research thesis. <laughs> so I'm just like look into. Yeah, most most definitely. Or if you know, if they're interested, if they're open to like learn how to do that, I'm sure that would be, um, you know, a process that an art therapist could assist someone, help them how to visualize. Yeah, I couldn't imagine not being able to do that because I almost feel it's like like my superpower. Like daydreaming is just like one of my favorite pastimes. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> what would I do all the time? Right. I imagine it'd be hard to like imagine for you or visualize for you. But I, 
I, I'm just considering that there's so mm -hmm. many different ways our brain is accustomed to thinking. Like some mm -hmm. people like see color when they listen to music. I see mm -hmm. movement when I listen to music or mm -hmm. some people you can give them a shape or ask them to visualize something really far out and immediately they're like, yeah, and you could even put that on paper. And then mm -hmm. some people, um, they're more verbal and that's not an option for them. So I think art therapy is a, is a great way, not only for the people that are already directed in that way or are spiritually mm -hmm. gifted in that way to be able to create art, but as also to do the opposite. Like in yoga, we say always do that thing that you least want to do or the opposite of what you want to do just to be able to use your brain in a different way and learn about yourself in a different way. Yes. I mean, I even with my own art practice, um, I like, like I sometimes I like really analytical, like I like doing portraits, and you know those are really challenging because you have to be very precise. But then my brain wants to use the other side, and like behind me, I have this like intuitive, you know, just colors everywhere. Like I, I need that other, so I kind of go back and forth just because I could feel my brain working differently. Right, and now that you mentioned that, the intuitive aspect of it, and I do a lot of work in what's known as the Wu sphere. So in mm -hmm. intuition and in manifestation, how does art therapy assist someone that is trying to connect with their own intuition? Well, it's tapping into like what I was mentioning of what feels good for you. So it's like, mm -hmm. as you are like putting down those colors, that's, that's intuitive of like picking what colors are you attracted to, you know, and being able to listen to that, you know, listen to that, your, yourself. And so, um, yeah, some, some people aren't aren't tapped into that. So that's where it is, where it's good. Like you have those choices. It's like, okay, well, those colors do have meaning. And you know, what what's that meaning for you? You know, and mm -hmm. um, so it's it is an inner journey. I would say that's that's part of the process is um, seeing what the symbols come up and then what do those symbols mean for you? It's not like I'm giving them the message. The message is coming from them because it's their world, you know, and mm -hmm. you know, what's important to you. Um, and as far as like manifesting, I see it more as energetically, you know, you know, wanting to be in alignment. Um, like when I had mentioned, like someone would, you know, wanted to manifest a lover, it's like, okay, well, you know, energetically, how are you loving yourself? And mm -hmm. how can we get into that, that feeling, you know, and then making art about that. So we'll do a lot of heart chakra artwork and, you know, bringing in those colors, the pinks and the greens and um, affirmations and, and things like that into the artwork so that they're, you know, they're going to be able to vibrate at that, that space. Um, so they mm -hmm. can manifest that desire. Does that make yeah, sense? Isn't that always the missing piece? Yeah, it totally makes sense. I just okay. want to <laughs> highlight something that you said, um, that usually it's something, it's reflective of their own inner experience. So they're saying they want a lover but how well are you a lover to yourself, mm -hmm. right? And that's the inner work that you do through these practices, art therapy and other modalities. So mm -hmm. you could begin to see, yeah, you want that thing, but if mm -hmm. that thing were here right now, are you able mm -hmm. to accept that? Are you able to live in a space of reciprocity or would that thing show up and you'd completely block it out or not even see it because you don't have this connection to your heart? Um, okay, yeah, so just jumping into what we were talking about. Uh, yeah, so even if like, if the want or the need was to desire a lover, we would be also doing a lot of um, artwork of what their heart looks like and what symbolism mm -hmm. um, goes with, with that heart. Because I've um, done many, many of those sessions where, you know, I've seen the, the caged heart or the heart with wings mm -hmm. or the broken heart, um, anchored heart, like all kinds of symbolism that can come along with can, of where they're at. And then being able to see it, they're like, oh, wow, that's, you know, that's a powerful image right. of where I'm at. And that, that reminds me of um, inversely, I, when I was doing emotional release therapy or EFT, there's this idea of anchoring and it's the ability to like, um, so you've heard of it, it's ability to surround yourself with the things you're trying to live into or manifest. So if a person was trying to like heal a broken heart, they would keep that painting up or if they were trying to find love or live in the spirit of loving, they would surround themselves with images or artwork that would kind of imbue that imbue them with that energy. I love it. It's like feng shui. I like to do that too. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I put things around you, but in certain corners. 
yeah. I guess. <laughs> but that's what I think of when also like the great beauty, even if you're not creating the art of being mm -hmm. able to be surrounded by art and to be mm -hmm. able to appreciate it, whether it's in like a, a museum or like an art fair, to be able to like engage with that part of your brain that is nonverbal or maybe not at the forefront of your experience. Yeah, I mean, I definitely need it. Like I, it's, I, I'm a little fixated on Instagram and like for my art feed is like, I see so many incredible artists and it's like, oh, it's so mm -hmm. satisfying to me. Cause before, before Instagram, I remember I just go to the art shows or the art fairs and how much I, I needed that. And my soul just felt so soothed after like consuming. I feel like it's art mm -hmm. candy. I'm like, oh, it's so good. <laughs> right. And then <laughs> it, it makes me think like, if we think of, so I'm not this, I, so I always think of how I tend to dress all in black and say we're both in black. <laughs> but it makes me, it, it, for me for me like black is like it feels safe and comfortable like if i could just have an all black wardrobe i would probably do that but i'm thinking of like our clothing or our fashion as art or mm -hmm. as a way to connect with a certain part of us or connect to a way we want to feel um, could you speak to like how maybe wearing certain colors or being surrounded by certain colors could change your, your experience or your emotional landscape? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really interesting. I, I bring this up, um, the story up a lot because when, when I, I, I really love working with the chakras and I remember there was a time, um, when I was really, really anxious. This was kind of a time when it was, like, my kids were really little, like two, you know, and my daughter was probably like one or something and um i was just feeling very anxious and had lots of bouts of depression because i wasn't actually creating and i really was attracted to the color red and not realizing that like my carpet was red or the rug in my mm -hmm. my living room right. i had red pillows i had red drapes and i was like decking everything i'm like why is it why am i decorating everything in red and then when i was like doing my artwork i was like oh my goodness it's like i was relating to that root chakra that i really needed mm -hmm. to, to ground myself and i and that that red was actually very healing for me like i felt like i needed to be surrounded by that color um and it's interesting now is the color blue <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> <laughs> i've been like it's so much in my paintings right now like my mm -hmm. room like my house is like this this room is, is totally showing up is that throat chakra mm -hmm. um and and indigo with the, with the third eye but um yeah and i f and i see that in my clients artwork as well it's like they are attracted to certain colors and when i find out you know the emotional where they're at emotionally mm -hmm. um that that will usually match you know if they have like a lot of shame you know and that's that sacral area if they're you know dealing mm -hmm. with their self-confidence you know it could be the yellow or they might just dis dislike that color they're like i hate yellow mm -hmm. and i was like well why are you hating yellow when you just you know your self-confidence is like this like let's <laughs> maybe we need to explore that a little bit <laughs> and just, just moving back for those um listeners or people viewing that don't know much about the chakras can you speak to that a moment what the chakras are and then their corresponding colors yeah 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 so um so for the chakras are these energy centers in the body and i know that that kristen you use it a lot in your yoga classes which is amazing because mm -hmm. i've been to your yoga classes and you do a lot of chakra work with them <laughs> And um, yeah, so for each one, um, you know, they're they're vibrating at a certain frequency and a certain color. And so like the lower um, chakra, which is the root chakra, it's like by your tailbone um, is like that red color. So that's um, also, if it's, you know, if you're feeling really like, balanced, you're gonna be um, grounded, uh, feel very like supported and rooted. Um, and if you're not, then you're gonna have that anxiety, anxious feel. And so it's also like related to um, like your family and money and your basic needs, those type of things. So if you don't have those, you are gonna feel anxious or, or not secure, right, and secure. Yeah. And so like, like moving up, yeah. Sorry, just on the root chakra. I like to say yeah. because so many women especially have yeah. trouble with the root chakra because you know patriarchy and the culture in which we're raised, mm -hmm. um, and I like to think of the chakras in terms of rights, like our right um, mm -hmm. to do certain things. So the root chakra, I like to say, is our right to exist in the world. Oh, I love that. Oh, look at this. I have this sitting right here. Can people oh, see yeah, it? Oh, yeah, there you go. So, yeah, the root <laughs> chakra. 
<laughs> yeah. And so, um, yeah, the root is what I need, right? And so moving mm -hmm. up is the orange is the sacrum, um, the sacral chakra, and that's I want um, your desires. And so that can be blocked by guilt for wanting those desires. Um, and, you know, usually if people have any kind of um, traumas or abuses, they, usually it shows up in like that root or um, mm -hmm. blocks um, or issues. Um, and then moving on up to that solar plexus, which is yellow. And this one says, I am. So this is about like your self-confidence um, and feeling worthy. And basically it's, um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's either balancing by moving too fast or moving too slow. So it's like you could be overpowering and domineering would mm -hmm. be like moving too fast. And then like if it's moving too slow, it's like you're like really like timid and, and not being able to like uh, speak up for your needs. Um, so that's what, for the um, solar chakra, I always think of it as, at least for me, most created, mm -hmm. most connected to creativity. Would oh, you, yeah? So, yeah, I always think of it as like, um, since I think of it in, in terms of rights, it is my mm. right to create in the world. Mm. So if I don't feel like I have any right to create in the world, then I don't necessarily want desire to be created, creative in the world or create something out in the world. Mm. I, I see it as like taking up space. <laughs> like yeah, I feel yeah. of yeah, wanting yeah. to take up space um, and feeling mm. confident and worthy that I can do that. Right. Um, yeah, so I can, I can see how it can be related to that too. Um, your heart chakra is about relationships and caring and being able to give and receive love. And that's that frequency of, um, some people say it's pink, but also green. Um, mm -hmm. that heart chakra. And then the throat chakra is about communicating um, with others and yourself, those words that you say to yourself. And it also has to do with listening too. So mm -hmm. it's being reciprocal of, you know, you're speaking, but you also have to... <laughs> Take stuff in the true meaning well. of communication where there's a, a back and forth. Yes. And then moving on up to that third eye of I see, and like we were talking about earlier about like having those visions. Um, so that person mm -hmm. might be blocked in their true. third eye chakra. So thinking about that, and it's more of like a, an indigo blue. Um, I have a question then, about that. With the, with oh. the block in the third eye. Mm -hmm. uh, what would cause a block in the in the third eye and your ability to visualize? Um, I'm not sure what would actually cause the block. Cause I mean, block. if I guess it would have to look at the person if like, has it always been there, or did something yeah. happen? You know, there, yeah, there could have been like a trauma. Been hmm. Maybe an early oh, I, trauma where they weren't allowed to. I don't know. Maybe dream or or they, were or they could confined. have been ridiculed for for their visions for speaking out about something about like okay. seeing something. or maybe they're scared of of the visions that they see mm -hmm. um and they blocked it off that could it could be okay. i'm just trying to think of like what what could could stop it um and then like healing that would I, I've, I've seen them um, a video uh, where the woman carol tuttle she's really really good with the chakras and she was like rubbing rubbing it open, rubbing your third eye open. I always thought that was cool or putting the stone. Um, I love before. putting stones. Yeah. I always put peacock ore on my forehead. Oh, nice. <laughs> and then the crown um, is I merge. So connecting with source energy. Um, and so the colors are like purple and gold and, and white. Yeah, so hopefully that's a little chart's helpful. <laughs> Yeah, so 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 the chakras all have colors. The chakras have to do with an imbalanced energies in the body. And if we wanted, if we wanted to bring in the experience of the chakras, um, we can we can do that through creating art. We can do that by surrounding ourselves with art or or certain colors. Mm -hmm. Um, my favorite is I always paint my nails in the in the color that I'm trying to embody. Oh, I love it. <laughs> what color are they today? Are they black? They are purple. Purple. <laughs> Very cool. Um, <laughs> like so, 
<laughs> so my clothes might be all black, but at least my nails have a color. <laughs> right. But it helps me remind me also as kind of a, not only as a ritual, but kind of a, as an intention throughout mm -hmm. the day. Like I, I know that I painted my nails this color because I wanted to be more intuitive, to be more connected, mm -hmm. to feel less analytical and more creative. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that helps throughout the day. Um, are there oh, any no, other? Oh. Yeah. I, just no, 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 no. Thinking, I was just thinking about like blocked in the third eye is yeah. when you become too analytical and you don't want to listen to the intuitive mind. I remember reading yeah. that somewhere as well is that, um, you know, the source, you know, the universe will give you like downloads or like inspiration and then, mm -hmm your analytical mind will want to say, well, how could this possibly happen? Because you only know your past experience. And so mm. you could block that. And so that's how it could get blocked by always analyzing things and like being very too too much into this physical realm and then not being able mm. to receive um, and listen. Because the universe is gonna stop giving you those signs if you're not listening to it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always think of like it, it, like the idea that's downloaded from the universe doesn't necessarily die with you. You just get mm -hmm. the opportunity to bring it out into the world. Otherwise it just moves on to someone else. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because it has to be born. If we if we think of like the muses, right? In Greek mythology, you invoke the muses and the muses will come and it's your choice whether to listen to them or not. And if you don't, that's fine with them. They'll just move on to someone else that will. Oh, but it's so much fun to play, right? It's so much fun to listen and <laughs> like okay i'll try it if, if you allow yourself to right um but i was thinking um are there certain day-to-day -day things that we can do to be more open to these creative downloads to be more open to listening to muses um other than wearing certain colors or surrounding yourself with certain things yeah i mean just the simple journaling like you know carrying a, a little sketchbook with you and doing a little journal every day i, I mean jungian um carl Jung basically did mm -hmm. that he did 365 uh, drawings um in a year one a day and he just did little circles and did mind shape and color and that's when he realized like oh wow this actually is a representation of my mood like he could see the mm -hmm. patterns of like of his mood so that's such a, like a really simple task of you know getting in touch with your emotion getting in touch with your intuition but it's got to be that practice um not just doing it one time like oh yeah. i did it it's you know and, and even like when the, the clients that i meet like i, I tell them like we got to have at least 14 sessions like i want to meet with you for three and a half months so that we can mm -hmm. see your patterns so we can you know, yeah. really start to understand your own art and the messaging and where you want to go with it. So yeah, it's a practice. It's kind of like a commitment. Like I do want to do this. I want to learn. But I love that because I am so wordy. I, I, I understand the word, the world through words and writing. So I hadn't even considered that journaling could be like a painting a day. Okay. Like it, it hadn't even crossed my mind, but that would be so much fun and it would use a completely different part of my brain that I'm not used to using. Mm -hmm. um, I actually do it inversely. I would, I tend to look at a, a painting or a tarot card or an oracle card and then journal about it. So it's backwards, mm -hmm. but um, maybe to dive deeper into mm -hmm. creative aspects of my mind that I'm, that I'm not used to using, mm -hmm. maybe drawing without judgment and then seeing what comes of it and and kind of analyzing it later or at least reflecting on it later would yes. be a really cool tool that would be awesome and and for me i'm i'm trying to open up my throat chakra so i'm i'm journaling because i'm i feel like we're, we're just so opposite right now because like when you're talking i'm, like, <laughs> I'm so not wordy and <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get my thoughts out. I'm trying to get my words out. So like I've been journaling in the morning and even at night just to like to become more expressive, you know, just to just to write, right, right, right. So it's it's funny, yeah, how that can so that's a, that's so great. That's why the world is balanced. That's why we need all like flavors and modalities because if we stay stuck in our own box, you know, mm -hmm. what, what we're good at or what we tend to like and what we like to do, then we don't really allow ourselves to grow and expand because we always stay yeah. within what's comfortable. Yes. And drawing wouldn't necessarily be comfortable for me. <laughs> because, oh, good. 
going to make you really uncomfortable. <laughs> it, would, it would initially make me really uncomfortable because I know that um, I'm not, you know, spiritually inclined in that way, you know, but how is anyone going to grow if we just stay in, in our, with like in our back pocket, you know? Right. You never know what the universe could, what messages could come up in your drawings, you know? Yeah. So that's really awesome. So you are going to share with us in activity. I'm going to join you. Um, okay. So yeah. we, we asked everyone to bring either a sketchbook or a white piece of paper. Um, for those of you listening uh, to the podcast and don't have a uh, video, please don't be driving and trying to do an art project. I feel like I have to say that. And then <laughs> pull to the side of the road and take out your sketchbook. Um, we also need some kind of art materials. What, what would you suggest? What's something people would have around the house? Yeah, it could be something simple, whatever you have. I mean, ideally, it would be like colored pencils or markers or um, gel pens. Uh, I love Sharpies. Like, that's my favorite is just using a Sharpie personally. But you could start off with a pencil, like an easy sketch, and then fill it in. It's totally fine. I thought it would be fun to um, just like the new year and um, we're kind of starting off with our intentions and things like that. I just did a, a like a vision board class in my membership group. And this is one of the next steps is creating a treasure map. Um, so we're talking about like that manifesting. So creating a treasure map of what you want to see um, this coming year. So it's actually like drawing out, like you could say three projects. What are like three main projects or three main things you'd love to see this year happen? And, um, you know, you could make a little key for yourself and say, so go ahead and name, yeah, make a little box. So when you, make a key, you make a little box. Okay. Yeah. Make it like a little, like what would, and then identify your three things that you want to see happen this year. And then as we, as we do this, is there, mm -hmm. um, like, uh, is there a wrong way um, to write your three things? Like, are, is there any way to be too general or too specific? Yeah, I would say um, just three things that you would like to see happen, right? So it doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be, I don't think there's anything wrong for your desires. It's like whatever it is that you would like to see um, like a pro, I always say project cause I'm just like a project. I love projects. So I'm, I'm putting <laughs> projects. Um, it could okay. be related. It could be related to your home. It could be related to relationships. It could be related to like any area of your life. Like maybe you want your spiritual practice to grow. So you want to like meditate every day. So you could say one of them could be like spiritual practice, you know, so it's whatever that you want to see. Yeah. Happen. So it could be fairly general. Like you, like mm -hmm. if you want to be like financially abundant, you could just write that versus like, yeah. I want a million dollars by September 21st. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. It could be, it could <laughs> be more general. Most okay. definitely. Yeah. So did you write down three things? Mm, almost. Okay. <laughs> I gotta get my vision board. I have to like, what did I say? I want it again. Oh, cool. I have one, two, <laughs> three. Um, I'm trying not to be so analytical. I'm gonna be more general. Um, yeah, just go with it. This is funny because this is more of like an analytical thing than like um, I usually do. So this is funny. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, I'm like, but how many and how specific and where do you want me to do this? <laughs> That's funny. And we did an episode on neurolinguistical programming, NLP, um, and manifesting in that way for the year, um, where we had to be very specific. So this oh, is like another cool. way and another way, another part of the brain. Um, yeah. Well, we're going to get more specific as we draw the treasure map oh. um, because um, you, you're going to start outlining like the steps. So oh, okay. it's kind of like, um, you know, you can put arrows or you could put like for each one of these, one, two, three, you could put like a little symbol next to it of what that represents. So. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw a little symbol and I know this one's going to take me a long time. So I'm going to like, I want my 
treasure map to kind of be like a swirl. So I'm gonna put my, this one particular, my first one, I'm gonna draw it here, but it's gonna take a little while to get there. So I'm just gonna put my symbol there, right? Yeah. Um, and then the next symbol, you can pick something else for your second one that you wanna create. So just for the people listening and not watching, there's a, a square on one side that's the key and you mm -hmm. have your three things that you wanna manifest um, mm -hmm. throughout the year. And each one, you're giving it a symbol and then you're drawing out these symbols somewhere on the paper, correct? Yes. Okay. So I have airplane dollars and a heart. <laughs> awesome. Oh, I'm gonna work on this. Let's see. So I have, have birds, mm -hmm. I have a book, and I have a card deck. These are gonna like be my it. three things. Okay. So yeah, so on this treasure map, you can, can I'm putting mine more like a timeline because I know one's going to take um I could be working on one and these are going to take longer even though these are mm -hmm. steps that I'm going to have to do like baby steps each each month to get here but it's probably going to take me like 12 months to get here 9 months somewhere like that but so what I'm going to do is for each one of these I put them on here then I'm going to like brainstorm right so this is that analytical um, and you could just write it on here as well. So uh, backing up a second, when we yeah. have our symbols on our paper, mm -hmm. we're kind of connecting them in a timeline and the timeline can be linear or it could be circular or it could be like a snail shape or any, really mm -hmm. any shape you want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And you're connecting one thing to the other, kind of estimating how much time it's going to take you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then obviously to, to create this as a treasure map, you can add little islands and you can, um, you can, you know, make it however you, you like, you could put some palm trees on here. You could, you know, you could put your riches and gold, you know, like if you're trying to manifest money, you want to do like a treasure mm -hmm. chest. That's cute. Yeah, that's cool. um, <laughs> yeah. You mm -hmm. can add as many symbols and you could spend at least a good 30 minutes of, adding details to represent that. So like, even though this is like my symbol for this, I wanna add, I would do wanna put like a nice big old treasure chest like of, of gold in here too, cause I feel like that can go together. Um, being real abstract about what I'm manifesting here, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what you wanna do here as well is like, we're, we're looking at it, but this is also like, almost like game planning. Now the next step is like, yeah, you can make it beautiful and cute, because this is something you're game planning, but the steps mm -hmm. of what can you do within these, um, I put my, these arrows here, I guess I'm trying to explain it to those mm -hmm. who can't see it, but I'm putting my arrows here, but what are these steps? Like, what can I do in these three months? What can I do in these next three months? What can I do in the following three months to make these happen? So, okay, so you can start, oh yeah, go sorry. ahead. Sorry, if we imagine ourselves as like a miniature person on our map, Yes. And let's say that every time we, if it's like a game board, every time we jump to the next space is like mm -hmm. a month. And then we jump to the next space, that's two months. And we jump to the next space, that's three months. And we arrive at the first thing we want to manifest. If that's what, how long we think it's going to take us to get there. Yeah. So you're like kind of guesstimating. Um, for example, the birds are representative of this art series that I'm working on. So mm -hmm. it's gonna take some time to, to create it. So I'll put on here um, for one of my tasks would be to, um, you know, paint three times a week, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. And then I wanna like also, I'm thinking about like, I'm gonna be marketing these pieces of work. So I wanna like, I wanna share my process with people, share my process like on Instagram. You know, mm -hmm. so like what, like start thinking of like the details that go along with that, you know, and like right, the updating. actual physical tasks you want to take yeah. in as you move toward this, this goal on your treasure map. 
Yeah. So this might be like updating my website, but it also could be like making connections with people. Um, you know, maybe I'll reach out to some hotels and, and share my work or, you know, like, so like really like brainstorming and visualizing and thinking of like, how can I um, make this to be successful or, you know, how do you want to see it, you know, and then how do you see those steps getting there? So it's almost like working your way backwards because say your first one is that you want to create this art series. So mm -hmm. you, you almost imagine it and you draw it as done or symbolize mm -hmm. it as done. And then you kind of work your way backwards as to what steps need to be taken in order to get to that final result. Yes. Okay. And then what's cool about it is like you can you can share, um, you know, you know uh, with people, and then they can help you brainstorm as well um, of getting to those goals and, and ways to do it too, which is fun. That's really so cool. I know so that we don't have. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, so you can do it in a group. This could be like a fun group project mm -hmm. of, of setting three goals and then working on a treasure map and, and brainstorming what you would need to work your way backwards from each of these goals. Mm -hmm. And then I have a, of a question. Could you do more than one? Like say you have three goals for your spiritual life, three goals for your creative life, three goals for your uh, home life. Um, mm -hmm. Could you do three different ones? Yeah, yeah, because this one definitely is just focused on more like my business aspects of, mm -hmm. of what I want to do, like with my art and what I want to create this year. But yeah, I definitely could have like a separate one um, focusing on like my my home life would be probably totally different than that. So yeah. That'd be cool. And I imagine like I get a lot of um, students and clients that aren't really clear on what their goals are. And it brings me back to you saying that we could use our journal and do our one piece of art a day and maybe bring some clarity in that way. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other preparatory steps that you would suggest in order to get more clear on the goals? Because I often experience and, and within myself too, that mm -hmm. maybe I, I, I feel like I, I want this thing, but the picture is not quite as clear as I would like it to be in order to create a treasure map. Mm. Um, so I think journaling would really help. Um, is there something else that you can think of? Yeah, I think it goes back to how do you want to feel? So it goes back to, you know, how do you ideally want to spend your day? How do you want to spend your time? And what is that feeling that you want? Because usually our desires we think are going to bring us this joy and mm -hmm. that. So it's those baby steps of it doesn't even have to be like some huge big accomplishment. It could be, um, I, I bought myself roller skates for, for Christmas and my daughter's some roller skates. No way, I, I just bought myself roller skates and I'm waiting for the FedEx guy to get here. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, how cool is that? Yeah, because it brings me that feeling of freedom. It's like, I love right. being 11 and 12 years old and just like roller skating. And I was like, yeah. ah, I wanna connect to freedom. You know, so like and that could be like financial freedom. That could be just like my personal work freedom of having like creative, I can do whatever I want, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so you can connect to it in other areas of your life where, um, you know, it's going back to that feeling first. What's the feeling that you want? And then finding those little experiences to, to put it in your day. Does that, does that help like, to kind of explore that a little bit more that people that can helps, see about That them? helps so much because I think most of us, at least here in the Western world, we, we think in terms of achievements or goals mm -hmm. first without mm -hmm. considering exactly that. How do I want to feel? And it might not be like I need to travel around the world right now. It might be I just need roller skates to travel around my neighborhood listening to Madonna because that makes me feel good. Yes, you know. and you got freedom. There. There's so much freedom in those roller skates. And there's so much freedom. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was even thinking I could only run so far, but I could skate farther, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get in the four weeks? No, Bob. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, me too. That's what I got. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's going to be so, fun. Yeah, I, I think that's so valuable. And it brings me back to a neuro NLP neuro linguistical programming session I did on values, um, mm -hmm. which really helped me clarify uh, exactly what my values were, mm -hmm. um, which number one was freedom. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you, we actually end up working against ourselves 
um, Mm -hmm. because we're focused on the goal. Mm -hmm. You know, I want freedom, but I've decided to teach 17 classes this week, you know, in person. Like that's not, (laughs) I'm not acting in the way that's going to get me to that feeling. Mm -mm. Right. So it's, yeah, because the analytical mind is like, oh, well, that'll make me this much money. And then they're like, the source says, we want you to feel good. You know, we want you to like, you know, buy those roller skates and and go around in circles so that you can like have that freedom. (laughs) Just have fun and be a kid again, because it's what you really want, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, And I think it also helps us, especially now with this, um, we're oversaturated with other people's Mm -hmm. lives right, on not Instagram and Facebook and everything else and television, that we could almost, um, I guess, dismiss our own values because we see these pictures of what mm-hmm. others feel is freedom or success or love. And we try to work toward that. And then we get there and are sorely disappointed because we're not connecting to how we really wanted to feel or what would make us feel how we want to feel. It's true. We got to go back to that. I think that's number one, just connecting back to the feeling. But Kristen, I apologize. I have to get going because I have a yeah. client at, in like one minute. So yes, absolutely. <laughs> very busy lady. We're going to let you go. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us. Um, if you want to learn more about Leah Guzman, can you please share where they could find you before you go? Yes, yes, yes. Um, you can find me on my website is leahguzman.com. And I do offer individual sessions I either do coaching or therapy. And then I have a, a group community that we make art twi- uh, twice a month as a group together, which is also fun. And on Instagram, I'm art therapy online and Leah Guzman art. That's me. I love it. I know everybody's going to go search for you. Thanks again for taking the time. I will see you <laughs> very soon. Um, and thanks for joining us on the Wild Wonder podcast. Uh, Patreon members can join us live anytime at patreon.com forward slash wild wonder. See you soon. Bye. Bye.